After you draw them, you can transform them at any time without losing any image quality. In this movie, we're going to discover the large variety of different shapes that Photoshop has to offer and learn how to modify them. To begin, I will select from the Shape Tools the Rectangle tool, and then I'm going to right mouse click on the rectangle in the Options bar and just reset that tool. The first thing that you'll notice is that you have the option to either choose to draw a shape, which will put the shape on its own layer. You can draw a path, which just gives you the outline of the shape, or you can actually put down pixels. To make it more flexible, I'm going to choose Shape, and then I'll select a fill color by clicking on the fill swatch. You'll notice that I can fill this with a solid color, or with a gradient, or with a pattern, or with no fill at all. I'm going to select the solid color, and we can see the recently used colors down below and the rest of the swatches. So in this case, I'll just select maybe a brown color, and then tap return in order to collapse the color picker. In the image area, I'll just click and drag, in order to drag out the shape. You can see that the Properties panel appears. And because the Properties panel is going to continuously fly out every time I select it, I'm actually going to click and just drag it so that it floats for a moment while we work with shapes in this video. I can easily change the width and height by clicking and dragging, and that will change the width of my shape or the height of the shape. I could link them if I wanted to, and I could also reposition them by either clicking and dragging on the X or Y, or by holding down the Command key and repositioning the shape in the image area. I have my additional options here for my fill and my stroke. They're the same options that we find up across in the Options bar. But down below, I have some additional options because this is a live shape, meaning that I can change the corner points of this rectangle at any time. If I click and drag to the right, you can see that I now have a rounded rectangle. If I click and drag to the left, we can make it square again. If I unlink these, then I can move any of them independently, so I can click and drag if I just want to change the shape of one of the corners. If I click and drag out another shape, you can see that by default, it's actually created an entirely new layer in the Layers panel. This makes it very easy and flexible for me to work with multiple shapes because I could switch to my Move tool and reposition either this shape or I could Command click to select the other shape and reposition it. If I don't want a shape, I can just drag the shape to the trash just like any other layer. If I know the exact size that I want a shape to be, I can tap the U key in order to access the Shape tool again and then just click in my image area, define the width and height, and then click OK. I'll go ahead and delete that by tapping the Delete key, and I'll delete Rectangle 2 as well by selecting it on the Layers panel and tapping Delete. We also have a Rounded Rectangle tool that's also a live shape so you can change the corners, and an Ellipse tool if you want to draw a circle or an oval. Let's move on to the Polygonal tool. If I just click and drag out, you can see that I get a 5-star polygon by default. If I rotate my cursor, the polygon will rotate. If I hold down the space bar, I can actually reposition the point of origin. I'll let go of the space bar, and then I can drag it larger or smaller. The number of sides by default is set up here in the Options bar. Let's go ahead and tap Delete in order to delete that. And this time, I'm going to create the shape by just clicking. You can see that I get a number of additional options besides size. Let's go ahead and increase this to 400 pixels by 400 pixels. And I'm going to change the number of sides down to 3. And I want smooth corners. When I click OK, you can see now I get kind of a guitar pick shape. All right, let's tap Delete. I'm going to click again. And this time, I'm going to change the number of sides. I'm going to increase it to 8. I don't want the smooth corners. Instead, I want the star effect. And I'm going to increase the indent side to about 80%. Now when I click OK, I get this kind of shape. Let me transform that and make it a little bit larger so we can see it. I'm just using Command T or Control T to access the free transform. And then I'll tap Enter or Return. And we can see what kind of shape that made. If I click again, then I can create another polygon. Let's go ahead and make this 500 by 500 pixels. 
and I'm going to decrease the number of sides to six. I'll give it an indent of just maybe 40%, so these won't go in as far, there won't be such a distance here. And I'm going to smooth the corners. I'll click OK. You can see I get a very different shape. Now, if I want to edit any of these shapes, I can switch to either the path selection or the direct selection. The path selection will select the entire shape. If I only want to select one of the points on the shape, the anchor point, then I want to use the direct selection tool. Now I can click right on top of this anchor point. You can see that it now is the only one that's filled and I can click and drag to change that shape. If I undo that, I can also click on the shape itself and click and drag that line. Again, I'll undo that. Moving to the line tool, I just want to show you that sure enough, you can click and drag out a line and the way you would change the thickness of the line is not with this width and height here. It's much easier just to change the weight. So I'm going to change that up to 10 and then click and drag out a line and you can see that that line is much thicker. In addition, if I ever want to add arrowheads, I can click on the gear icon and I can add arrowheads at either the start or at the end of the line or both of them. And then when I draw the next line, you can see that I have an arrowhead at the end of it. Finally, we have our custom shape tool. When I select that and I click on the downward pointing arrow here for the custom shape picker, you'll see that I have a number of different shapes here in my library. That's because I've used the gear icon in a previous movie and I've loaded all of the different presets. If I want to use any of these shapes in my image, all I need to do is select the shape and then click and drag it out. Holding down the shift key will constrain the proportion of the shape and then again, if I ever want to modify these, I can just select the direct selection tool, click on any single anchor point, or click and drag over to select a number of anchor points, and then drag in order to reposition and reshape that custom shape. Of course, these shape layers are just like any of the other layers in Photoshop in that I can change the opacity at any time. I can also change the blend mode. I can even add layer masks and put them into groups. So they're very, very flexible. Excellent. That wraps up the overview of the shape layers in Photoshop.